What's up, everybody? It's Jeff from Super Geeked Up. In the last video, I took you through the basics of playing Gwent, the Witcher card game. Uh, in this one, I'm actually going to play uh, a match against the computer so you can see it in action. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn my webcam off for now so you can see the full board and turn the game audio on. And I'm actually going to go into one of the challenges, uh, which are cool ways that you can, a couple things here. If you see here, the first couple things, fundamentals, card management are kind of like tutorials, really. Uh, but I think it's worth going through them. You can get uh, ore and other things from that, which you can use to get more decks. Uh, as you see, I've done Northern Realms and Scoia'tael. I'm going to go until Nilfgaard here, which I'm, in, I'm halfway through the challenges for that. So, and you'll see, uh, this is kind of what you get. You get 25 ore if you uh, complete this. And again, once you get to 100 ore, you can get a uh, new deck, and each deck has five cards in it. Uh, here and here, by the way, you actually get new leader cards. You start with one of the three leaders for each um, faction, and then these guys are the other two leaders. You get like here in Stolen Plans, I got John Calvi and more Ran. I'm assuming I'm going to get here at Double Agents. All right, let's go into Diplomatic Arts. I'm going to go again to my Scoia'tael deck. That's my favorite. My men know the meaning of sacrifice. Squesme Evelyn. Okay, so here's the, you get 11 cards uh, that you draw from your hand. And you can choose up to three to replace. So I'm cycling through. So I got one gold card. The rest look bronze. It's not the greatest draw in the world, but I do have a cool weather card there. Um, one thing about, for this card, by the way, the, which I said, you know, in the last video is super powerful, boost five adjacent units by four. I actually like to see if I have units that I can place on the same row. Um, like I see, I have four cards with these double arrows, uh, three cards, excuse me, which means I can place them in any row. So that's not bad, actually. I can place a decent amount of cards all together. So I'm actually going to replace this one <clears throat> because I found the computer doesn't usually play weather cards, uh, at least in these. Uh, online opponents can often play weather cards, so I probably would keep this if it wasn't that, but since it's against the computer, I'm going to replace that. Okay, I got another archer there. Um, oh, actually, I do have this silver card. Uh, let me see here. That's actually pretty good as well. This isn't a bad draw. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna try something, something else, too. Eh, that's not that. It's okay, but let me try... Okay, well, that's all right. Okay, uh, you see the coin flip there? Uh, so the computer's up there in red and down at the bottom in blue. Um, and it's just the coin flip to see who goes first. I actually like not going first because I like to see what my opponent does first. Um, and I'll also be honest with you, a lot of times I actually concede the first round um, and let them win it uh, as long as they've played a card because then that gives me an extra card than them for the next two rounds. And I kind of try to make sure I win the second and third rounds. That's worked pretty well for me. It doesn't always work, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but I do like to often do that. This is your deck over here. This is your uh, this is basic graveyard. When cards get destroyed by your enemy, they go here. Uh, and you can't obviously see either of these things. This is the total cards you have left. And these are all the cards that are in your hand right here. And here's the board. Like I talked about, the uh, melee. Uh, the melee here is here and the... Uh, upper row and then you got the uh, archery in the middle and the siege engines on the bottom all right so he played but we well, can hover over your enemy here to see what they're able to do to see if there's anything nasty they're going to do to you uh he's not going to do anything else except gain 10 and then get the two armor that he's already had all right uh one thing one thing i fortunate about my deck is a lot of times i don't have a lot of great cards to play unless there's an enemy on the board because most of my cards either boost or damage other people um, so you know what I'm going to I could play this frost card and start damaging him right away let me try that so I'm gonna play this and I'm gonna play frost to uh, the two rows there as you see a shame I have no time uh, so yeah this is one of these kind of like spy agent cards which gives me two but then he got to play an extra card here. Um, so he's at 18 right now. Big, big lead on me. Luckily, my two Frosts will be damaging by two and two, so four every round right now, unless he plays a clear weather card, clear skies card. All right. I 
think... Oh, okay, that's right. One of these... Reveal a card. So that meant he had to reveal one there, and I guess he gets to see this card of mine. Obviously, normally you don't have any idea what your opponent has. All right, so let's see what I'm going to do here. Uh, I almost don't want to damage those two because <clears throat> the frost is going to damage them. But... I'm not sure if I have a whole ton of other options to play here. Um, I almost want to concede this round since he played powerful cards right off the bat. I'm going to do that. Um, so, I, may, I probably maybe should have stuck with that, but um, I'm gonna like, I like trying to do the strategy and we'll see if it pays off. All right, again, I'm gonna get rid of this, this card because again, just the computer does not seem to play weather that often. And as you see that time, I'm like, two and I can only replace one. In bloodshed. He just played his leader card which uh, reveals up to four cards from either player's hands. Oh, interesting. So he got to look at four of my cards. Hmm, okay. Uh, yeah, I haven't... I uh, actually don't know if I've gone against that guy before. Uh, so he knows, all, he knows all these cards I have now. Interesting. All right. <clears throat> so... Let's start... Uh, let's do this guy. Uh, he's only worth a two, but he's going to play a random bronze or silver dwarf. And I'm going to strengthen it by three. Get the move on, lads! Look alive! Okay, so this guy will be strengthened by three from, uh, Score your from tail! this card. Attack! And then I can damage enemy by three. And if I don't destroy him, I'll strengthen myself by two. So this is good, because I can damage him and strengthen myself. As you can see, there is like some cool kind of, you know, effects there for the spells and voices for all the cards we're going to play. Okay, so this guy, that was very powerful. Uh, he just boosted himself. Uh, by a revealed unit. He's up to 17 now. Alright, let's see what else I have. Because I have to win this round since I conceded the first round. Alright, so she's pretty good. I can boost two of my allies there. Allies by three. Uh, actually, I'll play her down here. We ought to help one or the other. Alright, there we go. I'm trying to set up for this thing where I can boost five adjacent units by four. So I'm trying to get all five units on the same row here. Okay, so I'm not too far behind now. Let's see. Boost an ally by four. If, okay, so ideally I would boost an ally that's not a dwarf, because if it's a dwarf, I only strengthen it by three. But I have an elf on the board, so this will tell me I can boost her by four. Sure, no problem. So as you see, there are cards like this. It says, play all their school of the wolf witchers from your deck. So he had two, uh, another uh, Wolf Witcher, so he gets to play both of them at once. I've actually gone against opponents that have had three of these cards. They play one, they get all three, and it gets like 15 right away, which is a very uh, cool card. I have not get, gotten these cards yet, uh, but I would certainly like to because they're pretty cool. All right, let me play her because she can do four damage. Kiss bar in there. And let me see here. If there's anybody I have to... Uh, I don't know, I'll just take this guy out. Mostly out. Again, the good news is I have one more card than him. Sure, no problem. Which is why I conceded that first round. Okay, I think I'm going to play this because I can add two armor to three adjacent units and boost them by three. I do have three adjacent units on this siege row on the bottom here. So now it's important. If I played it here, I'm only going to do those two cards. If I played in the middle, I affect all three cards. So I'm going to do that. There you go, and that's, that's what their armor looks like. Uh, two there, you see underneath the value. Okay, so this cow. So on its own, it looks like, oh, too big deal, right? When it gets destroyed, though, or actually, not even destroyed, if you attack it at all, it spawns a chort, which is like kind of like a monster. They're usually worth at least seven, I think, uh, from what I've seen. So I, and I, I thought you had to kill this for that to happen, but even just hitting it like by one point would do it. So ideally, you don't want to damage that cow because you're actually going to help your opponent out. You, now, your opponent could also damage it purposely, of course. Uh, all right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, like this, for example. I could damage three units by four, but I don't want to damage that cow. So I think I will play her again. I never miss. And I'm just going to... 
attack this guy. I got a pretty good lead right now. So he's gonna pass. Yeah, because he figures he can't beat me. So I will pass as well. Alright, and I handily won that round. So now it comes to the third round. And I still have one extra card to him, which is what I wanted to have. Oh. So I... Okay, I'll get to that in a minute, what just happened. But let me... I get... I drew one card and I get to replace one card. Okay, now... Mm, you know, it's, yeah, this card is not very useful now because... Well, yeah, I only have two units that I can play at the moment. Uh, that's not ridiculously helpful either. I'm trying to think which one is better. I'm going to try to replace this one. Alright. Again, this is a bit of a dangerous card to play. Uh, it's going to destroy the highest unit on the board after three rounds. Uh, if I play it right, I can destroy his highest card. Uh, but I wouldn't want to play Geralt because then and have the highest card because then I would destroy my own card. What's nice is I have this dwarf who has lock, and I could lock this card and prevent it from happening if I think uh, I'm going to destroy one of my own cards. All right, let me go. You see, he has this chort already on the board. So what happened apparently is when that cow uh, died, I guess because it wiped off everybody from the second round, it spawns this automatically even if I didn't damage it. So. So that's the cow is actually helping him in this round. He's starting with seven. All right, let's get to work here. Uh, I'm going to play this right away, I think. Um, hmm. I don't know if that's a great idea. Uh, well, I think I got to do it or not. Let me see here. Let me put him up there, because that's where I am. And then this could actually be somewhat useful. Your humble servant. All right, he just got a huge boost there. Okay, good news is that's actually going to help me because when this guy triggers every two more rounds, it will destroy the 17. So that's actually great because now I don't need to lock this card because uh, it's not going to hurt me. So let me. I think I'm just going to. Play this and get rid of this guy. It's just basically just an attacking card. It does seven damage. There's been a mistake. I'm no mage. And again, you can always hover over any card to see what it does. Like that. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, one more round, and then this 17 will be destroyed by my Draconid here. And again, it's not going to destroy the, 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 my card itself. It'll just destroy any whatever the other highest card on the board was. If there happened to be two 17s, it would destroy both of them. Uh, okay, so right now I'm behind by a lot, but that 17 will be going away. Uh, let's see here. Alright, I guess I might as well... ...play him. I'm a dwarf of business! I guess I'll just lock him. Not, not really gonna do anything, but that's what the lock looks like with the chain. I'll do what I can. Play Triss, damage uh, one by five. All right, so there you see my dragon had just activated. That 17 went away, which is great because I got him down within two points now. And I have um, one extra card than him. I have four to his three. All right, I think it's time to play Geralt. Damn it. Uh, pretty much valueless, but it's a powerful base card you're going to see. Mm, yeah, Geralt as well. By the way, every faction, uh, Triss and Geralt, they all have those two cards. Um, there's certain cards that every faction has, and then there's uh, a lot of other cards of bronze and silver. Um, and I guess maybe some gold too that uh, each faction has uh, specific to them. Okay, he's only up by two. Um, I can return. So this will let, will let me take one of these cards, return it to my hand, boost it by three, and play it again. This could be helpful if you have um, a card that it does damage, and then you can do the damage again. Although before I play that, I'm gonna play my uh, leader Francesca, who you see here can mulligan a card. So I can pick one of these cards to get rid of and choose any card I want from my deck to replace it. And if it's a unit, I can boost it by three. Uh, by the way, when they say a unit, basically most cards are units. Like this guy, all these cards right here I'm hovering over are units. The only thing that aren't units are these special cards. 
So like this this card and this card, um, uh, anything that's a special, that's not a unit. So I usually like to pick a unit because I get an extra three uh, by doing that. All right, so I'm going to play Francesca. She can go in any row. I'm going to put her up here. Squish set up this boost card there. I want to keep that boost card. That's going to help me out. I'm, so I'm going to see if I have a better card than this in my deck. So you see, here's all the other uh, cards left in my deck. <clears throat> and oh, yeah, so I have two gold cards left. Um, I'm going to go... <sighs> either one I think is great. I'm going to go with Triss, though. Because Triss is my favorite character from the game. And she's one of the most powerful cards. As you see there, she got boosted by three. <clears throat> so, okay, he's that one card left. I have two. I'm going to play Triss. I'm going to play her up here. I'll and then do I can what do I can. five damage. Um, I will. By the way, lock does not protect you from being damaged, as you'll see right here. Uh, it just prevents uh, cards of special build from happening. Okay, so he just played Rot Tosser. As you see here, Cow Carcass went on my uh, board. After two turns at the end of the turn, it would destroy the lowest unit or units if there was a tie on the row, and then it would disappear. Now, that didn't really make any sense. He obviously should have played it up here on my, my uh, sword melee row, because then it would have got rid of this four, uh, this one worth four as the lowest unit. Here, in the middle row, it's not going to get rid of anything because I don't have any cards there. Um, so, all right, so he's out of cards. I have one left. I've already won, obviously. I'm above by four. If I was playing a multiplayer, I would just pass. I wouldn't, I'm not going to rub it into the person's face. But since it's the computer, I don't care. Uh, so I'm going to play this. This so you can show. This is the great way to play this card. Boost five units by four. That's why I put all those units on the top. Um, I can boost now all of these by four. Now again, if I played it here, I'm missing Triss. But if I play in the center, I hit all five cards, and they're all going to go up by four, and that gives me another 20 points. Super powerful card. He's out of cards. I'm out of cards. That's it. And I won two out of three rounds. All right. So uh, doing that, uh, conceding the first round did win in this case. I'll be honest with you, as you see there, the computer's only at level one right now, so it's not like that was a super difficult uh, challenge. But um, that just, and then you see here, that's lists all the rounds that you guys just did. And the multiplayer would also take you through like what experience you gained and ore and stuff. Um, and I think this is gonna tell me right now that I got the 25 ore from winning that round. Yep, there you go, 25 ore. And, um, and then it opens up the next thing here. You have to actually do these in order, obviously, to get... This is 50 or, and then this last one, Double Agents, should be this leader guy, more, uh, more ran. Because uh, I already got John before. So uh, that's kind of the idea of playing around. Let me just go back here to the decks. <laughs> so if you go over to... Car actually, if you go to Shop, this is where... Card kegs, this is where I would buy one. So... Uh, if you look in the upper right as the screen loads, you see I have 75 ore. Lots um, all kinds. I need 100 ore to uh, be able to open this keg. Uh, so once I get to that, I'll open the keg and I can get five more cards. This guy's very amusing. One more thing, you see Triss there is my icon next to level five. If you go to trinkets on the cards page, you can actually choose uh, what icon you want. It's gonna start with Gerald as the default right there, but you have uh, Siri. Uh, you have Dandelion, uh, uh, a, a bunch of characters, basically, oh, here's uh, Yennefer, uh, Triss, a bunch of characters from uh, the Witcher games, and then there's unlockable ones as you get to certain things uh, as well with different outfits. So that was me uh, just playing a full match against the computer. Uh, you know, if you go to single player, you can just do practice ones or do these challenges that I just did. Uh, there is multiplayer, which is a lot of fun. Uh, you can start with casual matches which uh, just randomly put you against an opponent, ideally one uh, very close to your rank. When I started off, that was not a problem at level one, and usually within 10 seconds I found a match. Uh, once I got the lower on level four, now I'm level five. It usually takes about 30 seconds or so, which is not bad at all to find a match. Uh, a lot of times though, I am going against now sometimes level seven and eight people. Um, uh, so uh, I, I'm not sure, I guess maybe there's not as many people uh, to quite level I'm at. So um, it'll try to get you as close to your level as possible. Um, so anyway, and once you get to level 10, is where you can do rank matches. So I'm working my way up to there, and that'll be fun to do some of those. Okay, so if you watched the uh, video before this and this one, that's kind of a basic idea of how to play uh, The Witcher card game. Gwent, 
I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you have tips yourself for playing Gwent, also please leave them. I would love to hear them and share them with other people as well. Uh, Supergeekedup.com uh, is the website where you can find all the geeky shows we do. We do a, a geeky improv a, a show, kind of like Whose Lines Anyway. We have uh, Super Knocked Up, which is a comedy about a supervillain who gets pregnant by her superhero nemesis. Uh, we do gaming shows and shows about uh, DC shows like Arrow and Flash, all that fun stuff. You can see the schedule on your screen right now. And if you dig what we're doing, we have a Patreon page. Uh, it's super geeked up on Patreon, and any support is greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I very much appreciate it. hope this was helpful. And uh, if you liked it, we'll try to do some more uh, videos like this. Thanks very much. I uh, hope to see you soon. And stay geeky, everybody. Bye.